Hi folks, I'm June with episode 3 of Nibbles and Mouse Bites. In this next episode, we're going to cover the 6502's branching instructions. There's a bunch of them, but they all do basically the same thing. Okay, let's get to it! You can think of branching instructions as the second half of a basic if statement. If the CMP instruction is the if and the conditional, the branches are the then part of the statement. Each instruction uses a different status bit to cause the CPU to jump to a memory location. Of the eight flags in the status register, only four can be used. The negative flag, the overflow flag, the carry flag, and the zero flag. All of these instructions work in the relative addressing mode. So what is relative addressing anyway? Relative addressing is a mode where the operand refers to a memory offset relative to the current program counter. Consider this BNE instruction. This is effectively an infinite loop that jumps back to itself. This much is obvious from the assembly that we type in, but the assembled instructions take up two bytes instead of three. This is because the relative addressing mode uses only one byte to represent the address to jump to. This byte is actually a signed value, whose magnitude indicates how far to branch, and the sign indicates which direction. Effectively, the address of the program counter and the value of the operand are added together to produce the address to branch to. Note that we don't enter the address in relative notation. The assembler can do that for us, so we don't have to think about it. Let's look at this visually, with the 8502's hardwired program counter behavior in mind. The first thing the 8502 does is load the opcode into an internal register and execute it. Immediately afterward, it increments the program counter. In the next cycle, it loads the operand into a temporary register like the opcode before it. In this case, it loads the relative address FE, which is actually negative 2 in decimal. The program counter is hardwired to increment after a fetch, so for one cycle before the branch occurs, the program counter is actually set to 1302. To calculate the branch address, the CPU adds the offset to the program counter to produce 1300, and then branches. Entering these kinds of addresses is a little funny. We type in addresses as a 2-byte absolute value, but the monitor will convert that into a single-byte relative value. In this case, it converts 1300 to negative 2 automatically. This is just the monitor helping us out a little, but it can be a bit confusing because the furthest we can jump is plus or minus 127 bytes. If we try to use a location further away than that, the monitor will give us an error. Thankfully, this kind of problem is relatively rare, as we'll tend to use the JMP and JSR instructions for distant jumps, and use branch instructions for conditionals. So with that out of the way, Let's do a quick, and I do mean quick, dive into the instructions and their effects. Effectively, we have eight mnemonics available to us, four of which are complements to one another. Since the instructions behave in mostly the same ways, we'll go through them very quickly. The first two are branch on carry clear and carry set. Both cause the CPU to branch to the address on the state of the carry bit. The second two are branch on not equal and branch on equal to. These, despite their names, work on the state of the zero flag. These are mostly used with the comparison instructions, which is why they have such a strange mnemonic. Remember that the comparison instructions do an internal subtraction and change the state of the zero flag for equality. The next two use the negative bit and are named better than the last two. These two are branch on plus and branch on minus. Plus branches when the negative bit is zero, and minus when it's one. Finally, we have the branch instructions that use the overflow bit. These two cause the CPU to branch when overflow is set and clear, respectively. 
That's pretty much it for the branching instructions. For the next Nibbles and Mouse Bites episode, we'll focus on the bit shifting and logic instructions. But before I go, I'd like to give a shout out to my latest patron, Holger Morgan. All of you, my patrons, are amazing. You all keep me inspired and engaged, and I hope this series is up to your expectations. Thank you so much! And with that, see you in the next episode!